Oh, das ist ja kein Coach. Pizu. Pizu ist immer. Hey. <lacht> Jingles. Yeah, that guy. Look. Uh, the best coach, the best tactician ever. Mm. Best coach, best tactician. Mm. I don't think there's anybody who can stand in front of Pizu. Mm. Even now, I'm, I'm certain that he's going to win the league in Saudi Arabia. Mm. That one I know. I can, I can put my head on the block. That guy is, you know, there's people who are called bookworms. Yeah. That guy is, uh, I think, is a footballer. Like mm. he's always thinking football. He doesn't sleep. Mm. He sleeps two o'clock, three o'clock in the four o'clock in the morning, watching Part tapes, time. preparing for the game, and all these things. You know. Mm. But there's this other side of him that, you know, I, you you'll never understand him. <laughs> you know, Pito, it's his way or the highway. Mm. That's okay. that's Pito for you. Like, listen. Pizzo's way or the highway. So because uh, I must look terrified. Mm. Uh, I'm looking after myself. Mm. Wake up in the morning, uh, 30 minutes jog, come back and drink my mahuatul. Mm. Look, mahuatula, one, two glasses a day. One in the morning, one afternoon, then I'm okay. So it's 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 a, it's, a, it's herbal, you know. Uh, there's no natural. after effects. Natural. Came to some natural. natural. So that's why I'm, I look natural. Um, today I am with the man who doesn't need any introduction, especially in the footballing fraternity. I mean, he played for the real supers, Pretoria Chilis, Val Professionals, Umtata Bucks, Super Sport, and the national team. And Dr. Peter Fayakhova, let me welcome you to the Green Table Podcast. How are you, sir? I'm uh, okay. Nothing much to say, but uh, by the grace, I'm still alive. Yeah. Uh, remind me, what name did Um Tata Bucks change its name to? They are still Um Tata Bucks. I yeah. think uh, they played PSL, then they were relegated, and then relegated. I think now they are playing in, in the amateur leagues. Oh. Yeah, they are in the Eastern Cape. And you no longer so have the Val Professionals. I Val Professionals, we had two. We had Orange Val Professionals mm -hmm. uh, that was bought by Morocco Solos, mm -hmm. and we had uh, one in Sharpville that was under uh, the leadership of Mr. Uh, I forgot his name, uh, Musutu Petlani. Okay. Yes, so I, I don't, I'm not sure what is happening now, whether they, they still exist or what, but the last time I checked, they were struggling and they had to be relegated to the uh, castle league okay but let's let's take it back and and go back to the beginning um what is it that influenced you to find the love to play football or, or soccer like what was the most influential thing for you to say this is what i want to do especially to end up playing in the professional league look when you you grow up you uh, obviously you would have plastic balls, t uh, uh, collecting plastic, uh, making a ball and play on the streets and uh, there was this other uh, guy, uh, he's an old man, uh, Braben, mm -hmm. may his soul rest in peace. Yeah. He would pass us every time uh, when we play, he's, uh, when he's from work most, most of the time. So he was a colleague of my father. So one day he called us, he took all of us uh, to Zone 11 Stadium and he started a team there named uh, Juventus. Mm. Then that's where my uh, love of football started. And he's the one who gave me the name of I. Mm. I think I was like your seven years old by then. Mm. So mm, most of the people don't know my name. They call me Fire. Everybody calls me Fire. Mm. So that's that's the man who, who started everything, who gave me the love of football. So today, as you can see, we, we just hear now where the name Fire came from. Um, so you'd say that uh, Braben played a very crucial part in ensuring that you, you developed this love for soccer. Yes, and these are the people, the unsung heroes of South African football, you know. They are not given anything, they are not, we are not, we don't even come back and celebrate them and say mm -hmm. thanks to them. If they are no more there, we say thanks to the families, you know. Mm -hmm. We are not saying anything and remember, these are the people who are buying you. A soccer kit, your ball, everything. They were supporting the team with the money that they earned from whatever job they were doing. And these are our unsung heroes, you know. They unearth the talent. They are like mine workers who, 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 who 
brings this diamond from the ground raw as it is and they are not given anything at the end of the day but uh, today maybe i would like to say to all of those guys thanks for whatever uh, role you have played to all of us who are playing football in the country and abroad do you think we still have people like bubra ben uh, Movali in this day and age are there people like bubra ben that still exist they are there and they are your coaches mm -hmm. they, they are your uh, foot soldiers they are there on the ground and mm -hmm. they are still not uh, being recognized your you know the amateur coaches the coaches that unearth the talent the coaches that teaches you how to kick the ball what is uh, positioning yourself on and all of those uh, basic football you know needs and they are still there and up till today they are still not recognized they are still not been given the the, the positions or the glory that they, they, they need to be given to. Do you think that, based on what you said, is it uh, the reason why we see so much gap uh, between the amateur leagues and the professional leagues, that we see so much uh, gap in between? Do you think that's the reason that causes such gap, that those ones on the ground are not being recognized as they should be? True, because uh, instead of uh, you as a big team, uh, uh, you know, uh, inherit this team, amateur teams, you know, two or three, that you know that I'll take players from these teams and in return I'll give them something. They just come, they take the players, they leave. Without giving any ball, any whistle, any call, or saying thank you to the coach, they just take players and leave. You know, and that's that's what kills the football because now they uh, uh, these coaches become reluctant <coughs> Uh, 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 to allow these teams to come to the players, but at the very same time, they are closing the opportunities for these young younger players. Now there's that uh, 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 cold war between big teams and the amateur teams or the amateur coaches. What do you think, uh, especially the experience, could close that gap between the professional leagues and the amateur team, um, professional teams and the amateur teams? I think there's 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 nothing for nothing. You know, if you want something, you need to say things. Mm -hmm. uh, amateur teams don't need money. Mm -hmm. Most they need equipment. Mm -hmm. So if you take a, a player or two and you give them equipment so that they can produce more, mm -hmm. I mean, it it it, it can only uh, help the team. It can only help uh, uh, the South African football. Mm -hmm. But instead of teams doing that, you know, they just come take players and leave. Mm -hmm. And now that's why the feud between. Uh, amateur coaches and the professional teams, or amateur teams and the professional teams. Okay, no, well, well put. Um, let's let let's go back to you now and focus on you uh, specifically. Um, just uh, from the amateur leagues uh, to the national team and the, um, uh, your professional playing time, what would you say was the most difficult coach you've worked with, from like from the grassroots until uh, oh, I, I would say two, yeah. and there will be a number one and number two. Okay. Uh, number one is uh, this guy when I was at Val Professionals, uh, uh, Antenne Eshed. Mm -hmm. He was from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently he was a soldier that side. He came this side. I don't know whether he acquired his coaching licenses and all that. Mm -hmm. But, hey, that guy, I don't know. He. he <laughs> we, he just didn't like me. It happens, you know, it happens in life that you just don't like somebody for yeah. no reason. But yeah. there, there was that bad blood between uh, the two of us. He didn't like me. But I played. He, he liked my play, unfortunately, okay. as a good player. But, you know, something was telling him, uh, this guy, you know. What are some of the things that he did that showed you that he doesn't like you? Uh, number one, we are in the bus. He was not there. We are in the bus, we go into training. I see somebody I know, I come through the window, I mm. greeted the person. Yeah. That was a case, like I killed somebody. <laughs> it's like I made noise in a library. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, I hear you, you screaming in the bus, this and that. Look, this is a player's bus. This is the team's bus. And you know the behavior of the players. Mm. It can't be like we are in a library. Mm. You know, so things like those, like I got injured the other day, and we, I was limping. Uh, he was taking me to the doctor, so I was limping. I was walking slow. So, come, hey, you, like, you walk like a pregnant woman. Well, you know, things like this. I'm injured. I can't walk. How old were you at that time? Yeah, uh, I was, I was 25, I think. Okay. So, 
uh, uh, you know football is what? Like if you play at the age of 30 or 25 or whatever age, yeah. you become young. Yeah. Because you don't know the, the ropes. You are learning everything. Yeah. You don't know how to be a, 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 a professional player. You don't know how to like uh, uh, be yourself. You don't know when to fight and when not to fight and what to fight for, you know? Mm. So you, you, you become young. Uh, you, 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 you are in a, a dark place. You don't know anything. You don't know anything about contracts. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about money. You, you, know, you know nothing about bonuses mm -hmm. and all those things. And the treatment that you must get as a player, you know. So, like I started at the age of 25. Yes. And who's the second coach? Pizzo. Pizzo Msima. <laughs> Jingles. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Look, uh, the best coach, the best tactician ever. Mm. Best coach, best tactician. Mm. I don't think there's anybody who can stand in front of people. Mm. Even now, I'm I'm certain that he's going to win the league in Saudi Arabia. Mm. That one I know. I can, I can put my head on the block. That guy, is you know, there's people who are called bookworms. Yeah. That guy is, uh, I think, is a football way. Like mm. he's always thinking football. He doesn't sleep. Yeah. He sleeps two o'clock, three o'clock in the four o'clock mm. in the morning, watching Hard tapes, work. preparing for the game, and all these things. You mm. know. Mm -hmm. But there's this other side of him that, you know, I, you you'll never understand him. <laughs> you know, Peter, it's his way or the highway. Mm. Not a, that's that's, that's Peter for you. Like listen. Peter's <laughs> way or the highway, you know. As as much as he's a good coach, and yeah. you know, but as, he, he, mm. he, we need to take him as a human being. Yes. We there's no perfect individual, you know. He's perfect on the other side, but he's got his flaws. He's human. How long did you work with him? I worked with him, I think, for because he was assistant when I got there. Oh, I worked him with him for a very long time. Man. Mm. I think. Boma five years, six years around that. Mm. Three years as uh, 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 head coach and maybe three years as uh, or five years. I think I worked with Peter Boma six, seven. I forgot, but more than five years. But within those yeah. five years, it's still the same. Difficult coach. No, he's like that. Even yeah. uh, when he went at uh, he was at Sundowns, he was still the same. That's his character. He, he can't, it's in his blood. It's in his system. Yeah. He can't change. I'm certain that <laughs> at Al Akhli he was still doing the same. He's doing the same at Al, Al Akhli, uh, the one in Sudan currently. Mm -hmm. I I know. That's that's him. He's, he's too strict. You, you you need to be strong to yeah. to be to play for Pete. You need to be a strong player. He needs strong characters. Yeah, yeah. True. It sure seems like Pito from how we see him when he conducts interviews and everything. Um, let's go now to the players. Who's your worst and best player that you've played with during your time? Still, from the amateurs to the professionals. Oh, you know, uh, there was, uh, at amateur level, there was this other guy uh, I played with at amateur team that's called Pushbacks, okay. uh, from Zone 11 uh, extension. His name was Bule. Johnson Chauzan, mm. staff, we used to call him staff or two four. You know, that guy, his uh, uh, nickname, two four, mm. it was, it derived from uh, 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 the fact that he, he wasn't sleeping. Mm. He would drink the whole Saturday <laughs> and half <laughs> of Sunday. Then when they say, hey, you are playing at two, three, yeah. at one, you, you, you struggle. He will give you problems if you are the one who just left now. You know, he, 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 he was talented. Yeah. And apparently he went to Tata Bushbacks where I played. Mm -hmm. uh, he came back. He mm -hmm. said he's coming back to that side. Uh, <laughs> but wow, they are using Muti. Yeah. So he's coming back to yeah. consult his Inyanga. He didn't go back. So do you put him under the worst or best player to play? Ah, that's the best player I've ever met. Even in the PSA. Yeah. If if I compare, if I have to compare him mm. with players in the PSL, he's yes. the best player ever. Player, and that guy could do what Messi and Ronaldo doing. Mm. The both of them, you have to combine Ronaldo and Messi to get uh, 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 that guy. He was the best player ever. And the worst? Oh, the worst player. Uh, it 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 will always come from Cosmos. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Cosmos players, uh, 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 those guys, they could kick. Mm. They would kick you the whole 90 minutes. Mm. And they would stick like a glue mm. to you when they are told that, look, stay with that guy, they stay with you. Mm. You know, and Rurabuka, he was not called Joss for nothing. <laughs> he, he would kick everything that comes in front of you. Yeah. And he, he, look, I, I, I respect him. Mm -hmm. And he and his, um, you know, uh, 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 accolades mm. because of his play. That was his strength, you know. Mm. And even today, everybody knows when you talk of Jos Rabuka, who are you talking about? Mm. Yes. Yo, yo. And currently, looking into the PSL, uh, who would you say is the best player currently in the PSL? Uh, we've got uh, 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 Sundowns. Sundowns is the best player in, in, in the country. Was well, it the best team? So I want the best player. No, no, I'm, uh, I'm trying to say, you know, you look at Sundowns, yeah. you can't single anybody out. Oh, okay. You know, from mm. defense, midfield, mm. like Peter Shaluli, yeah. Temba Zwane, Mokwena, like, you know, but now if you put Sundowns aside, you look at other teams, you'd give credit to Abu Mayo, mm -hmm. Kanye Samayo, mm -hmm. he's, he's doing well. You'd give credit to uh, Reynolds uh, mm -hmm. from Stellenbosch, mm -hmm. he's, he's doing well. You know, Bradley Hobla, Super Sport, he's doing well. Mm -hmm. You know, my, oh, my Lula is with Sundowns, you know, putting Sundowns aside. <laughs> um, Sundowns is a player when yeah. you talk about he is. Yeah. So, those, those players, and, yeah. and they are young and up and coming. So. The uh, future looks a bit brighter mm -hmm. for, for the country in terms of the national team. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah and, and the worst, and we're not going to be diplomatic, we're just going to state, state it straight. Who's the worst player in the PSL? You know, uh, I don't want to lie to you. I'm not trying to buy anybody's face, but yeah. uh, there's, there's, no, there's no player that I've seen him deter his play deteriorating the, the whole season or for the past two seasons he's been consistently dropping mm. you know it's it's been your roller coaster ride for most of the players you know sometimes you hear this player scoring on goals next thing let's take a da for an example mm -hmm. he's a good player yeah. you know he scored a, an on goal doesn't make him a, a, a bad player mm. because we're not talking as supporters here we're talking as analysts of football we analyze the play mm. from uh, start to finish. Maybe we give him six months for the past six months. How has he been doing? You know, we can't judge a player with one game and say no. It's, you know, so but uh, currently I don't see a player that I say hey, this one is not supposed to be playing the PSL. Truly speaking, what's your take on? <laughs> uh, because I want to go there. Your take on? Uh, is it Kamel or how hell? For me, for me, this is the worst player I've, I've, I've seen. Yeah, like he runs, he doesn't know what to do when he gets the ball. All I know is he will run and run and trips and fall. So, what's your take on him? Specifically? You, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from an uh, analyst's uh, point of view. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you have seen. I don't know if you were watching him or you were analyzing him. I was you know, watching because <laughs> true. Uh, as, a, as an analyst, I know that when a player comes, particularly as a sub, because Hota has been used mostly as a sub, mm. he's he's doing what he's been told to do. Mm. Otherwise, he could have been put on transfer during the uh, uh, open window period. Mm. He di he didn't. He was not put mm. on the transfer. So it means he's doing what the coach told him to do. Oh. You know, because now it's it's. Don't forget, we are we are at home. We are watching TV. We are watching a game. We are at the stadium. We are watching mm -hmm. the game. We've got our own tactics. Yes. The coach has got his own tactics. Mm -hmm. The player has got his own thinking. Again, now it's the coach's uh, tactics plus the, your your own individual brilliance. So now, when you watch a player, you need to understand why is he doing it regularly and he's not put on bench or he's not put on transfer. Then it means this is what the coach wants him to do. Now you're, 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 you're speaking as an analyst. I True. I you to hit the nail on the head and not be an I, analyst. That's that's my head. That's analyst's head. <laughs> um, 
uh, during your time playing at Super Sport, uh, we we get this every time. We get players who think now they're celebrities, and and, and and they act differently when we get to the dressing rooms, uh, um, training grounds, and 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 and. During your time, who would you say was the drama queen of that time? Somebody who thought, now I'm a celebrity, now I'm bigger than the team, now everything has to go through me first before it gets to the other people. Who would you say was that kind of a person? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's characters. Yeah. It's characters. It's, uh, uh, sometimes it's not that he's telling himself those things. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's the, the, the background also counts. And uh, what you want as a young boy, it's not what I want as a young boy, but we are both football players. Mm -hmm. And when we are there, obviously, the, 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 the behavior is going to differ. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean when I'm, particularly in South Africa, when you are confident, if you know what, if you know your story, if you know what you are doing, mm -hmm. and you tell people, me, I'm a star, they say, I owe a papa, lawyer's beat. Mm -hmm. But that's how it should be. Why, when I come to you and say, hey, I don't have money, I'm hungry, you understand. Mm -hmm. But when I'm saying, ah, me, I'm a best player. Me, I'm a, I'm a best player. You know, it's it's yeah. bad. It's like I uh, uh, the points, mm -hmm. but that's how life is. You you tell what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, so I I can't say uh, there was that kind of a player, but I know there's people who carried the team, would make things happen. Somebody when uh, you are one nil down or it's zero zero, uh, we are playing home. Pizzo wants the win. He will talk to this guy and say, please play. If and when you're not playing, the team doesn't tick. Mm. And that's Raymond Sopa for you. Mm. That guy, he had the team on his shoulders. Mm. Because half time when we are not playing well, uh, Runa will just sit there and coaches will talk to him alone. Mm. After that, when he switches on, the whole team switches on automatically. Mm. You know? So I would give him uh, that, that, the, that, those medals, the badge and everything that he was the general of the team. He was the, the heartbeat of the team. Mm. Yes, he would make things happen for us. I would even tell him, you know what, don't come to defend, stay here. When I get it, I'll give it to you. Because I knew what he would make things happen. Yeah. And what was difficult for you, especially when you got to the professional league, and you spent most of your time at Supersport, what was uh, the hardest time or things that happen in the professional space, especially in the PSL, that, that would say, you would say was were a bit of a challenge to you as a professional player at the time? Number one, it's family, your relatives. You know, they think uh, because you are on TV, you make money. I think the same goes with you. Mm. They think whenever you're on TV, million clicks in your bank. You know? <laughs> Uh, and that's that's the difficult part, relatives. Mm -hmm. When there's funeral, you are the first one to be called mm -hmm. because they think you have money. And you can't say you don't have money. Mm -hmm. You need to make something, mm -hmm. you know. So that's 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 number one. Uh, mm -hmm. The black tax, okay. it, it will kill you. Relatives, family, your siblings, you know, mm -hmm. it, it will it will it puts you under that that pressure. That stage puts you under that kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. And number two, it's your your friends, you know that grew up with you. They they expecting you to make things happen for them, you know. When you are there they feel yeah, mm -hmm. you know, he's here, he's here and mm -hmm. things will, will happen. So that's that you, you, you live under pressure. That's why sometimes when you are playing professional football, you don't uh, uh, visit too much. Yeah. Because you know that, you know, I know these people they are not going to treat me the same. Mm -hmm. They are all, when they see me they expect me to give or do something. Mm -hmm. You always visit when you have something at least on the side that you can give mm -hmm. to the very people that you yeah. are visiting, you know. That's that's the difficult part. You don't live your life like before mm -hmm. or like them, you know. And there's things that you can't do that normal people do. Mm -hmm. It takes that freedom. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the pressure that you get. And you are no more free. What's, what are some of the best memories playing in the PSL? Look, you get into a stadium, it's empty, you get back to the dressing room, you come back, it's full house. People are shouting, you know. Mm. It's, it's, it's a feeling that you can't buy. I, I, I don't care whether you are a multi-billionaire, you can't buy that. Mm. Where people come yes, to yeah. watch you, you know. You don't even talk to them. Mm. But they are there, they are there to support you. Mm. And the stadium is full, 
you know, you can't even hear your teammate mm. when he's like a, a two meters away from you. You can hear. Mm. And that's where your talent comes. Because mm. now, when you've got the ball, we can even shout, but you are not going to hear us. Mm. Now the individual brilliance comes from that. Mm. That's where we see a footballer. That's where we see how oh, this guy knows his, his story in terms of football. You know, mm. that feeling, uh, you, you can't buy a hot man. Mm. And the worst, uh, the, the best uh, uh, feeling is playing for the national team. Yeah. That's where you feel that, you know what, I'm a footballer. You're sitting in your room, there's people coming in, uh, they bring you Simba chips, they bring you snacks, you know. Mm. You get into a, 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 a dining hall, this is only for you, reserved for you as players. Mm. You know, that's where you feel that, you know what, I'm somebody. Mm. You know, that's, that's, those are the, that's, that's, one, that's the feeling that, look, nobody can give you that. Only the position that you are occupying can give you that. So is there extra money when you go play for the national team? Yeah, there is. There is. There is a lot of money. It depends from where you're coming from and who you are. Some teams, uh, when you go play for the national team, they give you money, your own team. Mm -hmm. Some, they, they, uh, uh, they, they give you money. If you, for any appearance, you get money, you know. Mm -hmm. And over and above that, the national team pays you. Mm -hmm. So you make, there's people who, who made a, a a, a, a lot of money than the others. It differs. It, di it differs from uh, one player to the other. And what were some of the memorable players that you played with in the national team? No, I played with uh, Steve Lequilia. Yeah. Uh, 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 he's my homeboy. I respect yeah. him. He yeah. he's he was better than me, far better than me. Mm -hmm. And I think he's one of the best players in the country. Mm -hmm. He's he's a specialist. Mm -hmm. Nobody is kicking free kicks like Chipa did. Previously, even today, yeah. so that that space is for him, and he needs to get something for the in jail, mm. you know. And I played with uh, and the late Leslie Manya Taylor. You know, those are the players that I played with. And look, I played with Tabang Tabang went overseas, so it means I was one of the best. You know? Yeah. So it's yeah, just that uh, I like local, local <laughs> is like it. so I couldn't go. <laughs> Abroad, <laughs> yeah, those are the one uh, few Andrea Rense, you know, yeah, those are the players that I played with. Oh, you were homesick like mm -hmm. Steve. Apparently, I had that he used to say he can't go overseas. Because yeah, uh, uh, guys coming from Val, we don't like going abroad, <laughs> we don't like it. We love local. What is it about Val that keeps you in the Val? How about you? Look, home, home is home, yeah, home is yeah. home, and uh. People will understand you better yeah. because they know you. Yeah. So if you go somewhere, people are not going to understand you because you grew up mm. from somewhere else. But now we, we grew up from Van, people here know, understand us better. Mm. So it's, it's, it's always better when we are home, you know. Mm. And some of the things that you, you do, the, you know, giving back to communities, it's better when you give back to your community, mm. you know, and mm. become a one white role model, something like that. True. But speaking of, uh, and I know we touched base on the fact that there is extra money when you play for the national and sponsorship and the teams uh, paying you for this and that. But where do this uh, money go? Because we see most of the professional guys, after the professionals bail, mm -hmm. it's like it's downpour. Where do this money go? After all the sponsorships, things, then, then. Yeah, but the first question, you know what? It should be how much? Because if, if, if I say you are, you are making money out of this podcast that you are doing, why are you taking this money? Ah, you, you are careless. How much is it? That's, that's the most important question. Because teams will tell you, yeah, yeah this guy is getting 450000 mm -hmm. He's the highest paid player. How much is the lowest paid player? Mm -hmm. You know, or an average player. Mm -hmm. How much are they getting? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's, that's the, the, the box that you must tick first. Okay, maybe so that we understand now what uh, what, what are we what, talking about currently or or should we go back and say during any the time, time during any the time. time what was the average amount of money that any player would get the average like let, let me make an example with other people's salaries yes if Luke left Paris he was not any more than twenty thousand okay. Benedict saw Villagas he left Paris he was not any more than twenty thousand okay mm -hmm. you know but yeah. I know in your mind you thought Steve Luke 
I think he was making more yeah. than 90, 100. How about Bam Ropa? You know, you like, yeah. How about Bam Ropa? You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Like, see what, those, I'm talking, I'm making an example with these guys, not because I'm taking them for granted, but yeah. these are the stars. I'm there talking about the stars. The so, there how much was I earning? If mm -hmm. those guys were earning less than 20,000, mm -hmm. how much was I, was I earning? Mm -hmm. You know, as a shadow player, because I was not that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, this, these are the things that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Football, few footballers started yeah. to make money in the country mm -hmm. during the World Cup mm -hmm. because there were sponsors now, yeah. personal sponsors. Mm -hmm. Lot of money put in few, mm -hmm. not more than five mm -hmm. players made money mm -hmm. in 2010. So we are still facing the same situation mm -hmm. even today. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 put an average amount. Are we saying that averagely would say players would get during your time? before you come currently, would get 5,000 minutes on average or seven, somewhere there. If, if five years ago, uh, there was a player at Casa Chiefs who was earning 5,000. You, and Chiefs is the biggest team in the country. Like your five, yeah. seven years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you say? Mm. You, you, you know? Mm. So, that, hence I'm saying, it's good to say uh, so-and-so is earning 500,000. Yeah. Uh, but he's the highest paid player. Mm. Tell us about your lowest paid player. Yeah. Then we will understand. Because now you are confusing us. If you say uh, we are paying this guy 500,000, yeah. we think the others are getting mm. 450 yeah. or, or 400. You know? Yes. Yeah. So that's why a, 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 a player needs to get the, the minimum wage. Yeah. So we need to understand that at least we know. Mm. For the fact that at least mm. this guy is earning twenty thousand a month, mm. at least mm. because that's the minimum wage for a uh, professional footballer. So there hasn't been that. Uh, it has not been. Yeah. But things are going well now because uh, PSL has come to the part with the South African football players. They have signed you know, your CBA. You know, uh, things are, are are coming up. They okay. they 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 able to sit down and iron out issues. Things are coming up. And I can actually. only imagine, uh, as a player, with what you've said in terms of black tags and your friends and everybody and your cousins and relatives, now you're earning 5,000 and they're expecting all that from you. And, and in the background, or us from the public space, we, yeah. don't, we don't know all of that. The supporters That's why we get the question. What? Supporters are expecting yeah. you to have your house, yeah. to have your own car. Yeah. You have kids, yeah. you have a wife, yeah. and you are earning... 10,000, yeah. for argument's sake, yeah. 10,000. Yeah. Your car yeah. and your house only, how much are you going <coughs> to pay? You you know, you've got kids. And what I want to say to you, it starts from 1960 mm -hmm. until to date. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a player who's never went overseas, who's rich? He's got a car, he's got a house, uh, kids are going to uh, school, and he doesn't struggle. For for you to be okay in South Africa, you need to go play abroad and come back. Mm -hmm. That's when at least things will shape up. At least, you know. But in South Africa, it's still difficult now. But like I said to you, uh, uh, there's a CBA that's been signed by the PSL and uh, South African football players. Mm -hmm. Things will come up. Things will come up. Players will get what's true to them. But, but if you take an example, yeah, we've talked about those who get the minimum wage. If you talk about players like, um, uh, who's this guy who played for Sundown Super Sport Pirates? He's an analyst now. Yes. yes. Um, he was at the top of the list at the time. At some point, <clears throat> he was the uh, highest paid player in the country. And I think it was, was it in 2000? 14 or somewhere, like things went sideways for him. What would you say happened to him? Because his salary we knew because it was um, set, it's, 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 it's at this kind of amount of money, blah, 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 blah. Then leaving out the, the average one, what would you say players like Abotiko Mudisa, what happens to their money? The, the thing is, with, in South Africa with players, we are living on the information that we are getting from the newspapers. Yeah. We, we haven't, uh, as... Uh, and that's where the, the supporters comes in. Mm -hmm. you, uh, 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 you are a supporter of a certain team, mm -hmm. uh, but you, you don't know anything about players. Mm -hmm. You know at the same time I know mm -hmm. that 
your team has signed so and so. Yeah. That you know, you are not treated special. Mm -hmm. So there's 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 some information that needs to be known mm -hmm. by the supporters. Then they will tell us. Mm -hmm. And when you are you as supporters know, we will know. Via word of mouth, it will spread. Mm -hmm. But the problem with the newspapers, what proof do we have? Because there was no pay slip. Mm -hmm. you, you know. Mm -hmm. So it might have been a lie. So. We don't know. <laughs> so are you trying to say it wasn't true that he wasn't? He no, no, was I'm not saying it was, a, it was a real or not. Okay. But I'm just saying I can't say no. it, 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 it was like that because I don't have proof. Mm. It was just written in black and white. Mm. And it was not him talking. Yeah. It was someone saying, I care the chief is paying so and so. And that <coughs> the guy was not even there. He was not interviewed. Mm. Unless they're saying, we, sp we have spoken to Tukum, uh, Tukum this and he said he's earning. Three hundred and fifty thousand in Kaiser Chiefs and the highest paid player. You know, it's 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 a different story. Yeah, but coming to that, I mean, most of uh, our professional footballers, uh, some of them we see all on media, in terms of their high lifestyle that they want to maintain. Some of them, not all of them, and the alcohol abuse that they subject themselves to. What would you say uh, in terms of those two? The alcohol abuse in the professional leagues and this high lifestyle that everybody wants to maintain. Maybe it comes from the society where we expect you as a professional player to have a golf seven or whatever. But those who can afford based on their pay slips from their clubs, what do you think influences them to this kind of an abuse of alcohol and just trying to proclaim themselves as this high standard living people? Uh, let's start with um uh, high lifestyle cars and all this yeah. and as a professional footballer you sign you get the contract five years you you calculate you see yeah. that this is the amount that i'm going to get so it means if i do this and that okay. i'm going to be left with this uh, amount mm -hmm. uh, you go you do what you want to do we you want to buy a, a, a smaller yanaka you want to buy a test i want to buy this somebody wants to buy lamborghini yes. you can't blame me for that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so the problem comes when you have signed five years you played two years, the mm -hmm. best football, for two years, then you get injured, mm -hmm. permanent injury. Mm -hmm. Because in South Africa, the laws doesn't protect players. Mm -hmm. The team says, ah, we don't have money now. Right? Mm -hmm. We can't pay you anymore. Mm -hmm. You take them to the uh, uh, PSL, and they say, ah, we don't have money. We can only afford to pay this guy two months. Mm -hmm. What happens to the other money? Now, mm -hmm. do you see that your calculations Mm. Are not they, they, they become wrong now. Mm -hmm. But they are right, they are written down in black and white. Mm. And you are guaranteed. You see? Mm. So that's where the mistake comes. Mm. And when we see you, we thought, ah, we come, mm. you, you, you went for something that you can't afford. Mm. You see, that it, then now it becomes your problem. Yeah. yeah. You know? And now when you come to the issue of alcohol abuse and <coughs> all these things, mm. that is not the footballer's problem, mm -hmm. it's a societal problem. Okay. Otherwise, we could have seen it, I blew it. It was going to be only footballers. footballers. Unfortunately, these people, I got money from ref, I got money from work, gave me this money. You know, it's a societal problem. So mm -hmm. if you want to solve that issue, we need to address the society at mm -hmm. large. Because players, before you become a player, mm -hmm. you are a member of society. Mm -hmm. Then you go be a what, whatever you want to be, a, an artist, or you want to play football. Mm -hmm. So if you can address it from... Mm -hmm the society's level, mm. then we'll get it right. Mm. That's, that's where the problem is. The problem is not with the players. Mm. It's with the society. But do you think uh, the pressures of playing professionally and the pressures coming from uh, families, pressures coming from the fans to perform, do you think sometimes tribes them, leaving out the societal issue, tribes setting players to alcohol based on the pressure that they are getting now from the outside world? Hence, I'm saying uh, it's a societal issue because there's somebody who's working at a certain company. Mm -hmm. The same pressures are coming. Mm -hmm. There's somebody who's uh, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. The same pressures are coming. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So, hence, I'm saying everybody from the society mm -hmm. is doing the same thing. It's just that these ones are on TV or newspapers and now the focus changes. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's where we, we, we make a mistake. Because now we are turning a blind eye on the real issue and focusing on individuals mm -hmm. and we will we'll never get it right yeah. but if we say okay let's address this from the the, the schools let's give uh, w when we grew up there was a, a, a period called guidance mm -hmm. 
yeah. we would be guided. Yeah. But now they are calling in uh, life skills. Yeah. Let's have people who have these things go to schools, give these uh, uh, kids life skills when they grow, go to football academies, go to uh, a drama, whatever, talk to these kids, go to schools, go, to, you know, mm -hmm. then we will, we will minimize it. Ultimately, it will go. Definitely, it's a certain issue. It's true. Yeah, no. Now we, we have a clear view of some of the things that happen in the background. Because if you read newspapers, you think, ah, man, this player is true. But at least we have you as an analyst to give us the background or an overview of what actually happens within that space and within that world. But coming back to you, what do you think now, looking back, you could have done different with your career and your life in general? Look, uh, I I don't regret anything. Yeah. Anything happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened happened for a reason. But what I could have done, maybe what I could have maybe done differently, it's having a business whilst I'm still playing. Okay. Because what I did is I knew I always wanted to have a business, but mm -hmm. I wanted to have a business after football. Okay. Now that's that's where the problem is because now your business does not have a face, does not have an ambassador. Mm. But if you are still playing and you are still in the limelight, mm. people, everybody would want to go to that uh, fish and chips if yeah. uh, it's a fish and chips because mm. you are there and you are playing for a big team. Mm. You know, you are playing for chips, you are playing for mm. some non -starters. You are there. The supporters will go mm. just because you are there and they will support mm. you. They just want to shake your hand and they will buy your uh, scamba and your quarter and all these things, you know, because you are there. Mm. But now, after you have retired, they have. They are taking your eyes, their eyes, to somebody else who the, has replaced you. The one player who did that best was was um, uh, uh, Chiefs Chabala Shabala. Simple. Yeah, I think he started the fish and fries Chiefs while still playing. Well, Chiefs, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it yeah. became big because he was still a superstar at the time. True. So now he just has to manage after playing. Yeah, uh, the, 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 uh, what, uh, the money that you are making in the business, you put aside, you don't yeah. even touch it because yeah. you are working and you are getting a good salary like yeah. then, you know. Yeah. So things are shaping up after football, then that's when we say you have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. The one that's guaranteed, not this one of going to school, being educated, because mm -hmm. sometimes you, you're not going to get a job. Remember, we are in South Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Having degrees doesn't mean guarantee. It doesn't guarantee any, any job. Yeah, true. So what do you think it's the same or um, repeated mistake that players, the current players are making that you as the former professional players made? What do you think are some of the mistakes that are, they are still doing them even after maybe you guys as legends advise them, that, hey, don't do this, do that. What do you think are some of the mistakes that they keep making? Look, I think the mistake that... Uh, uh, current players are doing that we have done and maybe they are few now because now at least they, they are waking up uh, it's investment someone will come mm -hmm. to and invest your money invest in property mm -hmm. you know, but how the how part yeah you you, you buy four houses in centine mm -hmm. and you say i'm investing mm -hmm. how much are you going to pay for those four houses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know but if you buy them here mm -hmm. in the valley Mm. Uh, in your location, mm. you buy four four room houses, you build two rooms and the garages outside. You can afford those houses. Mm -hmm. I mean, one house it's maybe four hundred thousand now, mm -hmm. so it means one point six. You have four houses. Mm -hmm. You know, then you can you can make money out of those four houses. Mm -hmm. It's you can make, it's possible mm -hmm. and it's doable. You can maintain those houses. Mm -hmm. So I know players have been told. I know one player that I can't mention his name. He was told invest uh, uh, in property. He bought, he had nine houses, mm. but uh, uh, the area in which he bought the houses, mm. it was too expensive and he lost most of his money on those houses. He ended up selling them, others have been repossessed, but now you see it's it's a loss. So player? it's, no, I can't mention it now. <laughs> I don't have the right, you know, the, what is Popia? What, what? Some people you can't call the names, but some you can. Oh, we would put a disclaimer allegedly. You but. never know. I don't have money, maybe he's got something and he'll come back to me, you know? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So you can't just say people's names that if he was maybe my homeboy, like the ones that I mentioned, I yeah. know Chiba is my 
yeah. Adi, we close. Yeah. We do some of the uh, activations together yeah. for the community. So I, I, I know he can even talk about me anyway. Mm -hmm. I can talk to him about as long as it's not bad. So these other ones, I'm scared. <laughs> Okay. No, but we can hear that the same mistakes is, and I think even the society we've we've been talking about is that our our footballers don't invest, um, uh, and you're right to say they don't get the proper advice to say, what should I do? I'm getting all this money, but I don't know what to do with it. There is no one who advises me properly to say invest in a certain thing. Who would tell you no? But you can't go to a certain area and all those things. But I think them also they should be willing to listen and open up their minds to say, why can I get such an advice, even before the advice comes to them, do you think? True, but uh, sometimes you are, you are focusing on making money from football. Yeah. When you are a player, you know, you, you're working. Yeah. It's, 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 job. it's a job like any other body yeah. who's working, wherever they are working. Mm -hmm. But uh, when somebody comes to you and says, you know, there's money in uh, property, mm -hmm. And you are saying to yourself, yeah, this guy might be telling the truth. You go to Sentinel and say, how much is this house? They say it's two million. Mm. So how much is it going to uh, uh, work in two years? Yeah. They say uh, maybe four, five. Mm. Then you say, yeah, it's a good investment. You know, mm. in yeah. Investment is putting less and getting, getting more. Definitely. You know, yes. And mm. that's, I think that's, that, that's where the problem is. We need to... Say, okay, I want to invest. Where can I invest? Then we need mm. to get, you know, uh, professionals in the uh, in the field, in that field of property. Mm. That's where we make our mistakes, you know. I, I'm, I'm one of the culprits. Yeah. I bought a house. Mm. I didn't make change of ownership. And somebody else wanted to buy it from me. I told this guy that, no, do the change of ownership with this guy. <laughs> And I would get the money. The money got into that guy's account. He vanished. I, I looked for him. He died. Now, yeah. And what can you say? You can't answer. Hey, no, it's not women. Hey, people don't want to. They, they make a statement. They keep quiet. Mm. They don't, they're not going to listen to you. Yeah. And the more you want to answer, the more you popularize it. You know. Mm. So it's better you keep quiet because you know what happened to you. Yeah. Yes, I know most of the players have lost money because they were trying to invest it, but yeah. they invested wrong. Mm. You know, some yeah, are invested sense. into these mm. Ponzi schemes yeah. and what, what, what. what. So we, we, we've tried, I mean, and they try, you know, because I don't think there's anybody who would say, I want to be poor in the next 10 years. The next 10 years. True. But is there, a, um, in the PSL or even uh, at SAFA, is there a financial uh, advisory body somewhere to say players come uh, the door is open if you want to find out if there are any possible investments that you can make is there something like that in the PSL or SAF? Uh, there's nothing like that I mean if you are a player you must look after yourself you know there's there's teams that sometimes brings uh, I know when we had super sport financial advisors would come and they will want to talk to us, but you know, uh, it depends. Sorry, they came on which days. Maybe sometimes we're having an appointment, or you need to go fetch a child at the school. Now you are not listening. You just want him to finish because your mind is somewhere else. You know, you are giving this guy a, a, a divided attention because you are worried. Hey, I need to go fetch the child, and the the team said today this guy is coming. You sitting there, you are you are not listening. You just sitting there, you are making numbers. When he said, "Do you guys understand?" Yeah, no, we understand. Give us your card. Give us your card. We call you, you, you because you just want <laughs> yeah, you him, just want him to go. You know. Yeah. I think in in rugby they doing it better. In cricket they doing it better mm -hmm. be, because uh, they take you through stages. When you are okay. your first time, you <coughs> sign your first contract. Mm -hmm. They take you to the financial advisors. You know. Now yeah. you have time. Mm -hmm. You listen. You know. Mm. You, they, they, there's that, but in football, there's nothing like that. It's, mm. it's either you, you are lucky, maybe you have your uncle or whoever who's financial advisor, and he comes on board, he talks to you this and that, you know. Mm. But teams don't do that. Yeah, yeah that's bad. I think there should be something that's included specifically from Safa to say we should have something like that because I know that in rugby and as you mentioned cricket, they do that very well. Uh, in terms of looking after their, their, their professional players. 
Um, in closing, just when I'm that the uh, Hawani, um, what can we say that the Peter for Hawani is up to now? Um, the family is the what? What? What are you up to uh, in this current moment? Uh, look, um, I'm a family man, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm happy wherever I am. Yeah. I'm happy as an individual. And uh, okay. that's what it's needed. It starts there. Yeah. Because it starts with me. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking good care of myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm into community now. I'm doing some few community engagements with different NP who want me to help them with some other stuff. And I will add, I also have got my own foundation, Peter Khovane Foundation. Uh, during lockdown, yes, I was able to give away food parcels. Mm -hmm. I was able to give wheelchairs, mm -hmm. you know, yes. But now I, I have stopped a bit because I'm still uh, looking at doing some bigger things for the community because there's uh, 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 things that I've seen that, you know, what, uh, our community needs this and that, you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to tie some knots, but there's big things coming but they're still in the pipeline mm -hmm. yeah but uh, with god's grace i know this will be possible and are you still playing especially maybe weekends i'm playing i'm playing there's a masters uh, league cdb masters football league i'm i'm playing for umlilo football uh, masters mm -hmm. uh week in week out mm -hmm. i'm playing football it's in my blood it's Football is worse than Nyaupe because there's no rehab yeah. for football, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a very dangerous yeah. track. Yeah. 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 So I'm still playing. I'm, I'm old. I nearly just lose my age, but I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. You should have. Right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm old, but I'm still playing. I'm still playing with these 35 year olds, yeah. 38 year olds. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still there. Have you seen these 35 year olds? Because you look like you're 35, so what do you mean? Hey, that's why I'm saying I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. lastly, the last point is what would be your advice to the upcoming generation who are looking into being professional players, playing the PSL, and and those that also, as, as, as a pro bowler, who think that having a degree uh, based on our education system would be a uh, um, uh, something to fall back on should uh, football not not work out especially coming from a pro pro league what would be your advice to this upcoming generation uh, education yeah. education is not diploma it's not degree it's not a certificate yeah. if i come to you, you 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 explain to me what is a contract what needs to be in the contract that is education mm -hmm. if i come to you and you are giving me an advice that you know what when you are a player uh, invest money into this and that and this is how to do it the how part that's where you get educated that is education okay. education is not degree and all this and that you know so that when you are you are going to sign a contract you know going to school completing your metric understanding english and can express yourself better it helps why because the contract is in english mm -hmm. it's not in uh, any what uh, the native language. Yes, it's it's not. It's in English. You need to read it and understand. That is the kind of education that you need. Because mm -hmm. you, if you know, if you have financial education, yeah. if you know how to use your money, if you know how to save money, mm -hmm. that is education. That will make you a better person mm -hmm. in the future. That will make you a a, a better role model. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 what that's what I think. It's it's the solution because people don't want. They think when you talk of education, you talk of degree, diploma, no, not that. Education is not that, it's not a paper. Mm -hmm. Education is knowing what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. True. So they should just learn, uh, cannot learn in our native language, uh, education, to know everything, not just be a bookworm, just to familiarize yourself with everything that happens within... Be streetwise. Yeah. I don't want to talk about this guy who's streetwise and he's a millionaire and he's all over the paper today. But I don't want to mention that guy. He's rich, he'll take me to court. Look, he's doing things that even yeah. educated people can do. He's yeah. giving educated people problems. Yeah. You know, so, because he read. 
Mm -hmm. He understood. Mm -hmm. He learned. He mm -hmm. asked. You know. Mm -hmm. So that's what people must do. That's what footballers must do. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, a, a, a young boy at home who wants to be a footballer must do. Mm -hmm. You know. Because yes, I don't say people must not go to school. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I'm saying education. It's twenty percent. But eighty percent of your success. It's being streetwise, knowing how to do things. Yeah. And uh, last, the last advice in terms of getting into the professional league now, getting a team in the PSL, what would you say they, some of the things they should be conscious about and be aware and do? You must know what you want. You must know why you want to. Mm. You don't want to play football in the PSL, be a professional footballer, because you want to be in the newspaper. You, are, you want to be there because you want to work. Mm -hmm. That is your job. That is the kind of job that you wish uh, to be. Mm -hmm. Because there's somebody sitting next to you in the class who wants to be a nurse. Somebody sitting next to you wants to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Somebody who wants to be a, an artist, they want to sing. Somebody wants to be an actor. Mm -hmm. You know, but mm -hmm. let's know the reason why. Let's know what is that. That is the job that you are going to do mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And that is where your life is. That is where your future is. Mm -hmm. Respect it. Oh, no, thank you so much, Tate, Peter, Faya, Khwabani. Um, as we had it, uh, my beautiful Zanzi voice viewers, we, we had our uh, former professional player, Tate, Faya, Khwabani, uh, telling us about the ins and outs of the professional league, about football, his life, and everything in general. Uh, just trying to show us um, his uh, analytics as we have had him. Uh, you're still doing the an uh, analysis portrait, right? I'm, I'm, I'm an analyst. Yeah. Independent. <laughs> okay. oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not captured. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should capture you. Um, so you can hear his in depth analysis uh, mostly uh, with uh, uh, Floyd Mahan from Tata FM. But he gave us the insights of the professional league and everything. And sir, uh, thank you so much for making time for us. And until we see you again. No, thanks for remembering me. Yeah, it's an honor for me to be here yeah. and shed some light with you guys. And, uh, jog, come back and drink my mahuatul. Mm. Look, mahuatula, one two glasses a day. One in the morning, one afternoon. Then I'm okay. So it's 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 it's, a, it's herbal, you know. Uh, there's no natural. after effects. Natural. Came to someone need. So that's why I'm, I look natural. And I'll forever be natural here. Let's have a class just to end uh, 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 this interview. Uh, on a high, on a very high uh, on note. A high note. So guys, um, uh, do support our channel, uh, check out richk.mzanzi voice and look out for Mahan in all the near uh, pharmacies, um, it's very healthy, it helps with a lot of things, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, and the rest is, is endless, I mean there's so much on the list here that you can go for and uh, I wanted to mention one here but I no, not yet. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it also cleans the, 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 the system. As you can see, that the fire still looks like she's, he's 35. And I still look like I'm 12 years. So <laughs> it's all in this bottle. So that the fire. Thank you for coming again. Cheers, cheers.